gentlemen, welcome to this edition of For the Now Space News, your weekly news wrap-up for the week ending August 13, 2022. On this edition, we're going to have a few headlines for you, as well as uh, Meme of the Week. There will be no cognitive conjecture this week. Instead, I'm just going to do a little tribute to Judo Jean LaBelle who passed away this past week. A lot of respect for that man and what he did for combat sports. And uh, so that'll come at the end of this uh, newscast. So to begin with, I've taken some headlines from RT News website. And the first headline reads, only one in three U.S. voters can locate Taiwan or Ukraine. A survey conducted after Pelosi's visit showed only 34% could point the island out on a map. I wonder which island they mean, Taiwan or Ukraine. So we have adverb, verb, Adverb, adjective, 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 pronoun. And then we have, as you can see there, a dash, which in and of itself, in this context, would create a break in the continuance of the evidence, especially when it's preceded by and followed by a space. So then we have adverb and then dangling participle verb. You see what would normally be considered a conjunction or, however, it's not performing the function of a conjunction in this context. It's an adverb because it's not a bridge between anything. There's nothing before it except the break in the continuance of the evidence. As you can see, I have also put some yellow highlights on there where I'm pointing out some particles of negation uh, in the words, past tense, suffixes, uh, prefixes, future tense, suffixes, prefixes, and uh, vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word or just a vowel sitting in a sea of space. So in the fiction sense, only one in three U.S. voters can locate Taiwan or Ukraine. I believe it uh, because, I mean, I doubt that very many U.S. voters can name and locate all the states. Next headline. Germany estimates cost of rebuilding Ukraine. The effort will cost billions and will be more ambitious than post WW2 Marshall Plan, according to the German leader. So we have adjective, adjective, pronoun, adverb, adjective, pronoun. So Germany is making estimates. Have you ever met Germany? I never have met Germany. Um, So, but they can make, he or she can make estimates or whatever their pronouns are. I guess they can estimate the cost of rebuilding Ukraine, which in essence means not building Ukraine. So they're estimating a cost of nothing. Next headline, U.S. COVID czar cracks joke about pandemic. Anthony Fauci jested that coronavirus emerged not from China, but from his kitchen. Adjective, 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 pronoun, adverb, dangling participle verb, adjective, adjective, pronoun in the past tense, Adverb, adjective, adjective in the past tense, pronoun, adverb, verb, adverb, verb, adverb, dangling, participle, verb. That's an interesting statement. I mean, have you ever heard of such thing as a Freudian slip? I mean, I I highly doubt that it was his kitchen, unless another synonym in the fiction for kitchen would be laboratory. And, you know, especially if that laboratory is located in China. I don't know. Uh, But, yeah, ha-ha, Dr. Fauci, ha-ha. 
Next headline comes from Al Jazeera. World continues to ignore Gaza's never-ending state of trauma. The besieged Gaza Strip has faced yet another devastating, deadly Israeli attack, but the world continues to ignore our endless trauma. So as you can see, this is an opinion from Al Jazeera from Yari Hawari, who is a Palestine Policy Fellow from the Palestinian Policy Network. So it's obviously, you know, a biased statement, no doubt. We have adjective pronoun, adverb past tense, I'm sorry, adverb future tense, ignore adjective, Gaza's is a pronoun, followed by adverb never, adjective ending, pronoun state, adverb of, dangling participle verb, trauma. Now here's a little something you can put in your back pocket, ladies and gentlemen. If you see a word that has ing as a suffix and you're syntaxing, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, that is going to be syntaxed as a tangible contract word, if it has that gerund modifier on there. And the reason why I chose to, to put this headline up there is because, uh, you know, my heart does go out to the people on the Gaza Strip who have been uh, being persecuted, you know, with my perception for many, 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 many years. And the interesting thing about grammar and language is the way people use it. When they use such a trigger word as, say, anti-Semitic, you realize people associate anti-Semitic as, like, anti-Jewish, which is, is not correct as far as the word Semite goes, because what is a Semite? A Semite is just someone who speaks a Semitic language. So the, the human beings who populate the Gaza Strip are also Semitic. They're Semites too. So if you, you know, I guess support Israel, you're anti-Semitic. If you support Palestine, you're anti-Semitic. If you criticize Palestine, you're anti-Semitic. If you criticize Israel, you're anti-Semitic by the fictions, you know, terms and conditions. I know this is a touchy subject, so I'll be curious as to how YouTube handles this. Um, but I just wanted to put this out there just because this has been going on for many, many, many years. It's basically an open air concentration camp over there. Next headline, Switzerland, no longer a neutral state, Moscow, burns sanctions against Russia mean it cannot represent Ukraine in Moscow, Russian officials insist. So we have pronoun, adverb, verb, adverb, adjective, pronoun, and then that dash and a break, you know, the two breaks and continue to the evidence on either side of the dash. And then Moscow is a standalone pronoun. Well, I mean, this makes sense in the fiction sense that how can Switzerland maintain neutrality if Bern, Switzerland, which again, like Germany, I mentioned earlier, I've never met Bern, but uh, they're imposing sanctions against Russia. So how can Bern claim any type of neutrality if they are actually sanctioning Russia? The last headline of the day, the FBI raid on Trump's residence shows whose side the law is really on. This week, Americans got served notice once again that the scales of justice are tipped heavily in favor of one half of the country. So we have adverb, adjective, pronoun, adverb, adjective, adjective, pronoun, adverb, verb, adverb, adjective, pronoun, adverb, dangling, participle, verb. This is a very interesting situation, ladies and gentlemen, and I think that is incorrect what it says there at the bottom that the scales of justice are tipped heavily in favor of one half of the country. Not true at all. Uh, with my perception, the scales of justice are tipped toward the very, very, very wealthy. And one half of the country is not more wealthy than the other half. The scales of justice are tipped against everyone that's not a member of that club. This, what happened to Trump, happens to 
past tense United States citizens every day, every day being railroaded. I mean, take, for example, the death penalty, okay? You know, people say, well, are you against the death penalty or are you for the death penalty? Well, I'm against murder. You know, I don't, you know, do no harm. Rule one, rule equal. Um, can you guarantee me that there is no one on death row waiting to die right now that is innocent, that has been wrongly accused? Can you 100% guarantee me that everyone in prison, whether they're on death row or not, are guilty of the charges that they've been accused of and, and convicted of? No, you can't. No, you can't. So that's why the system is rotten from the ground up. And that's my take on that. Let's move on to the meme of the week. So the meme of the week, you have what appears to be a British soldier here, a red coat. It says, when the country that revolted over taxes hires 87,000 new IRS agents. Hilarious and ridiculous, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so now I'm going to move on to a tribute to the late Judo Jean LaBelle, who passed away on uh, August 9th in his sleep. At a very young age, this man uh, began training in boxing and in catch wrestling. So he's been training in martial arts all his life. What he's most famous for, I guess, would be his stunt work in movies and training celebrities and also training uh, a couple mixed martial arts fighters and professional wrestlers. He was a very engaging personality. Uh, when he was a Teen, in his late teens, early 20s, he actually got a black belt in judo. He went to Japan and, and trained in that. And then he entered pro wrestling. And in, in 1963, he was involved in, I guess, what the world could consider the fir very first mixed martial arts match. Although there, are, there were many rules in place that were to his detriment. He was supposedly going to fight a boxer which I can't remember the, the individual's name who put up some sort of money saying that all the Japanese art martial arts were, were bogus, were fake. And he put up like a, a mon monetary challenge saying anybody can beat me using one of those martial arts, you know, we'll get this money. And Gene stepped up to the challenge. But as it turned out, the person making the challenge wasn't going to fight. They appointed somebody else to fight for them. And their name was Milo Savage, who I guess was a wrestler, uh, sorry, a boxer who actually had wrestling training. And so they fought and um, Gene was, I think, 31 and this Milo Savage was 39. And Milo's was a little bit smaller than him. But in any case, it, uh, there were a lot of rules that were limiting Gene, such as he couldn't use takedowns below the waist. But that's okay in judo because there's a lot of them that come above the waist and he utilized them effectively. And in the fourth round, he choked out uh, Milo Savage with a rear naked choke. And as you can see here, he's getting his hand raised. Um, he's also famous for his stunt work with Bruce Lee. He also trained Bruce Lee um, in grappling. He also trained Chuck Norris in grappling. Here they are together. And of course, the late great hot rod Roddy Piper, Rowdy Roddy Piper, uh, Gene trained him in professional wrestling and catch wrestling, trained him basically to be a shoot fighter. And the uh, very famous Rowdy Ronda Rousey, who took her moniker from Roddy Piper with his blessing, she was also trained uh, some of her uh, pro, pro wrestling and judo from Uncle Gene LaBelle, and if you watch her fights in the UFC, uh, the major and before the UFC in Strike Force, she was accompanied by Gene to the ring, to the octagon, to the cage, and she pioneered women's sport. First UFC champion, undefeated for a very, very long time, using judo as a base. Um, another great mixed martial arts fighter, uh, Carl Parisian, 
who was very fun to watch, um, was trained by Gene. He was also friends with many celebrities and choreographed stunt scenes. Here he is with Harrison Ford. He also trained kickboxer Benny the Jet Urquidez in grappling. Here he is choking out Milos with the rear naked choke back in 1963. And I saved the best for last. This is obviously a doctored up picture of him rear naked choking Steven Seagal. There was a story going around for a while that um, Gene met up with, with Steven Seagal and Steven pretty much criticized Gene saying that, that Gene couldn't you know, Gene wasn't what he said he was, that the rear naked choke would not work on Steven because of his Aikido training. And uh, supposedly Gene put the choke on Steven, put him to sleep, and, and Steven uh, crapped himself, pooped his pants. It has since come out that a neutral part, well, not really a neutral party, but I think it was Seagal's bodyguard who was there when it happened said that it was basically a... Uh, a meeting between the two of them where Seagal did indeed say that Gene wouldn't be able to choke him out. They were standing up and Gene put the choke on him but didn't he didn't lock it in. And then as soon as he did that and didn't lock it in because they weren't being serious, Seagal did this and, and tried to chop to Gene's groin. Uh, and then which at which time Gene foot swept him hard. Seagal landed on his back. Gene helped him up. And that was the end. And that was that. So rest in peace. Judo Jean LaBell, much honor and grace to you. Condolences to your family and your loved ones. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me for this week's edition of For the Now Space News. Uh, next week, we'll get back to the regular scheduled programming with the Cognitive uh, Conjecture series and also your weekly headlines. Uh, stay safe. And I wish everyone peace. Good night.